I'm going to show you how to record your screen with computer sound and a microphone using your Mac's built-in screen recorder and a free audio plugin called VB Cable. All right, we're going to start here on the VB Audio webpage. This is where you download VB Cable. Now, VB Audio makes a lot of Windows audio apps, including the very popular Voice Meter, which is a virtual mixer. But we're interested in the virtual audio cable, VB Cable. And you can see there is a Windows version and a Mac version. And you can see the Mac version is for Intel and M1 Macs. VB Cable is donationware, so it's essentially free. But if you find it useful, you're encouraged to donate by purchasing a license. I'll click on the Mac Download button, and I'll download the VB Cable Mac driver. Once VB Cable is downloaded, I'll go and find it in my Downloads folder. I'll double-click the zipped file to unzip it and that unpacks this folder containing three files. I'll double-click the README file to open it up. And you can see that Package 108 is compatible with Intel and Apple Silicon Macs, while Package 107 is for Mac Intel only, but works on Mac OS 10.10. .10. Well, I'm running a Silicon Mac, so I'll select the Pac 108 disk image and double-click it to launch it. Then I'll double click the resulting package file to install VB Cable. Then I'll just follow the prompts for installation. Now it's a good idea to restart your Mac after installing VB Cable. All right, with VB Cable installed, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to record your Mac screen with computer sound and a USB microphone using the Mac's built in screen recorder. After that, I'll show you how to use an XLR mic with this setup. So to get started, I'm going to hit Command Space Bar on my keyboard to open up Spotlight Search. And then I'll start typing in Audio MIDI Setup. And it auto-completes, so I'll just hit Return, which opens up Audio MIDI Setup. This is the central hub for configuring audio on your Mac. On the left panel, you can see all the different audio devices on my Mac, hardware and virtual. And at the bottom of the list, you can see the newly installed VB cable. I'll select it. And in the right panel over here, I'm going to check some settings. I'm going to go up and select Input, and then select the Format menu. And you can see all the different formats that VB cable supports. So for recording my Mac's computer sound and my microphone, I'm going to make sure under 48 kilohertz that two channel 32 bit float is selected. 48 kilohertz is the standard audio format for digital video. Then I'll go over to output and make sure under 48 kilohertz that two channel 32 bit float is selected as well. All right, once VB cable is configured, I'll go down to the bottom of the left column here and select the little plus button here. And from the menu, select Create Aggregate Device. You can rename this Aggregate Device if you want to. I'll leave it as is. But with it selected, I'll go over to the right panel here and adjust some settings. So the first thing I'm going to do over in this panel is select my USB microphone, which is the Rode NT-USB Mini, so it's at the top of the list. And you can see that the Rode NT-USB Mini has a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, which matches everything else, which is very important. The next item I will select here in the list, let's make this list a little bigger here, is VB Cable. And I'll make sure for VB Cable that Drift Correction is selected. Do not check Drift Correction for the first item in the list. And that's it for the aggregate device. So next, I'll go back down to the bottom of the left column here and select the little plus button again. And this time, from the menu, select Create Multi-Output Device. Now you can rename this Multi-Output Device if you want to. I'll leave it as is. But with it selected, I'm going to go over to the right panel again and adjust a few things. Under Sample Rate, I'll make sure it's set to 48 kilohertz to match all the other devices I'm using. It's very important. Then in this list of output devices, make sure your Mac's built-in audio is at the top of this list. Now, built-in audio can go by different names on different Macs. It could be called built-in audio, or external headphones, or Mac mini speakers, or Mac Pro speakers. 
whatever hardwired audio outputs you have on your Mac. Now keep in mind, whatever output you select is where the computer audio will be coming out from. So if you select external headphones, the computer audio will be coming out of the mini stereo jack on the back of your Mac. If you pick speakers, the sound will be coming out of your speakers. Once you've selected your built-in audio output of choice and put it at the top of the list, then select VB cable so that it's second. Also make sure that drift correction is checked for VB cable, not for your built-in output at the top of the list. I'm going to add one more item to this list of outputs, and that's my USB mic, the Rode NT-USB Mini. Why am I doing that? Well, the Rode NT-USB Mini has a headphone output, so I can listen to my voice as I speak and listen to the sound coming from the computer at the same time. Handy if you need to hear what you're narrating over. Let's say you want to use AirPods to listen to the computer audio while you narrate. Do not put them at the top of this list, or the process will not work. Instead, make sure a built-in audio output, your speakers or external headphones, is the first thing on the list, then VB cable, then check your AirPods. And make sure drift correction is checked for them as well. All right, before I close out of audio MIDI setup, I'm going to go over to the multi-output device and right-click and select Use this device for sound output. Very important to do that or things won't work. And that's it for audio MIDI setup. So I'll close it. And now I'm ready to record. All right, for my screen recording with computer sound and microphone demo, I'm going to record one of my YouTube videos here. So to record everything, the screen, the computer sound, and my USB mic, I'm going to use the Mac's built-in screen recorder screenshot. And I can open it up using the keyboard shortcut Shift-Command-5. And there's the screenshot interface. You can also get the screenshot through QuickTime Player by opening QuickTime Player, then selecting File, New Screen Recording, and you'll get the same screenshot interface. So with screenshot open, Looking at the settings, I'm going to leave record entire screen set. You can also record a portion of the screen if you want to. But I'm going to go into options here, and I'm going to leave everything as is, except I'm going to make sure under microphone that aggregate device is selected. This is the aggregate device that I created in audio MIDI setup. Important that this is selected. And now I'm ready to record. So I can start recording by clicking this little record button down here, or I can just click on the screen. I'll click on the screen, and now I'm recording. And I know I'm recording because of this little stop button icon on the top menu bar. So here I am speaking into my USB microphone, the Rode NT-USB Mini. Now I'll go ahead and start the YouTube video. iMovie, Keynote, and QuickTime Player. Now you might think of these apps as consumer level toys, so even bloatware, not for serious content creation work. I've been a professional video creator for more than three decades, spent 20 years in professional television. And I'll just bring this down, this level of the video down so you can hear me speaking. And that's how you're going to want to control the mix or the, the level of your microphone versus the computer sound is to control the computer sounds using the native or source controls. So in this case, the YouTube video, it's the little volume slider on the player camera on your iPhone all in high quality ProRes, a video format used extensively in professional editing. And it'll take a little bit of practice and trial and error to get the level, the balance between your microphone and the computer sound. Head, some B -roll, text, jump cuts, zooms, and the odd shake effect. Well, iMovie's got you covered. You can even throw in an over- And when you're ready to stop recording, you can just go up and click on the little stop button on the top menu bar, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, control, command, escape. And I'll just pause this video here. And here's my screen recording on the desktop. I'll open it up in QuickTime Player by double clicking on it. And then I'll play it. Recording, and I know I'm recording because of this little stop button icon on the top menu bar. So here I am speaking into my USB microphone, the Rode NT USB Mini. Now I'll go ahead and start the YouTube video. iMovie, Keynote, and QuickTime Player. Now you might think of these apps as consumer level toys, so even bloatware, not for serious content creation work. 
I've been a professional video creator for more than three decades, spent 20 years in professional. And I'll just bring this down, this level of the video down so you can hear me speaking. And there's my screen recording with computer sound and my USB mic. Level of your microphone versus. All right, if you're using an XLR microphone with a USB audio interface to record your voice, everything I just showed you is the same, except you need to make one critical adjustment to your settings here in Audio MIDI Setup. Due to the nature of how USB interfaces output microphone audio and how QuickTime Player, aka Screenshot, records audio. Bottom line, if you don't make this critical adjustment, you'll end up with your microphone sound coming out of the left side of your speakers or headphones only. Here's the adjustment. Select VB Cable, then select Input, and under the Format menu, under 48 kilohertz, switch it to three channel 32 bit float. And make sure output is set to the same thing. This way, your microphone sound will be on both sides. Now you'll end up with a three channel audio recording rather than two channel stereo, but many platforms, including YouTube, have no trouble with that kind of file. If you do run into an issue somewhere, you can always mix the three-channel audio down to two-channel stereo by importing and exporting your recording out of iMovie. One last tip before I wrap things up. Let's say I want to adjust the volume of the computer sound I'm hearing through my speakers or headphones while I'm recording. Now, if I try to use the volume controls on my keyboard, I get this icon, which means I can't adjust the volume. To adjust the volume before I start recording, I need to go into the sound output settings and switch from the multi output device to my speakers or headphones. And then I can adjust the speaker volume with my keyboard controls. And when I'm finished adjusting the speaker volume, I go back and reactivate the multi output device and record. Otherwise, when you're done recording, be sure to switch back to your default audio output.